here we are. We're doing endocrine 16 in our series. Been quite, <laughs> quite the series of talking about all the tissues in our pets that make hormones in this case. Uh, now we're on to the testes. And maybe I'll point this out. If you want to talk about one, you say testis. Testes is plural. And then you could say testicle or testicles. Okay, well, we know that in the male, the gonads are the testis. Remember, we had talked about the female gonad is the ovary. Just a little bit review there. And then we know the go gonads, in the case, this case, the testis makes gametes. Well, in the male, the gametes are the sperm or spermatozoa. Um, this top one, I guess you could, these are both plural, spermatozoa, sperm. There's no such thing as sperms. So that's, those are both plural terms, sperm. And I guess you probably, here's a sperm cell. You could say that if you're pointing to one. Okay, well, it's always nice to talk about where these things are located. We're trying to show you all the locations of the endocrine tissue. In this diagram that somebody made, I'll point out the testis. That's singular, remember. And they're pointing out that the testis is located in the scrotum. They haven't labeled that. But the scrotum holds the testis away from the main body. The testes wouldn't work well if they're up here. This is actually where they develop, someplace up here. And then they descend into the scrotum around the time of birth. Each animal is a little different. But I want to talk about the testis and then the epididymis. So you can see the spelling. You guys can take notes. You should be, hopefully. Wow. Hopefully I made that point. And that's the in situ location, right? In situ means where they are naturally. Okay, let's do, let me um, take that up there. I might need the room in situ. I'll leave that there. Here's another great drawing. It's in color. And again, there's the scrotal sac. You can call it the scrotum, scrotal sac, the testes. Not too far away from the body, actually, in the horse. This happens to be horse, but I didn't say, say that. And then there's the epididymis. Um, so this is a stallion, right? Oops, I almost disappeared there. This is a stallion. The stallion has its testicles. If the testicles are removed, and a lot of pets, they are horses, cats, and dogs. In this case, the horse would be called a gelding if it was castrated. Now, let's look at some real tissue. Those diagrams are drawings and they're perfect. Nothing ever shows up that beautifully. But anyway, here are some testicles, four testicles. Well, they're out of two different, two animals, right? Two males. I don't think you'd ever find a, a male with four testicles. Uh, and you might say, why am I hedging on that? Because sometimes there's more than the normal number in some cases. But these are lamb testicles. I thought they showed a nice little, the outer uh, shiny surface, which is going to be labeled up here in a little bit on another diagram or picture. But I'm encircling the testicle, the testis. And then this structure, you can kind of see, is like, attached to the outer wall of the testis, and that was the epididymis, and that was labeled in the past, just recently. Okay, well, let's see. I want to show you this one first. Here's another, you might say, blurry picture, and it is, And but I wanted to make a point here that this animal, when it was castrated, or actually it was probably, this was not during castration. The reason I'm hedging there is because they must have dissected this animal because here's the normal size testis in this male that was being dissected. And then this, you might say, what is this? Well, this is a testis. See the small epididymis, but then it's definitely smaller. Well, it ends up being, this was a 
a cryptorchid animal. So now I need to get some uh, words out here. Um, castration, right, is a term. Well, neuter, we neuter our pets. But that's a term really only reserved for dogs and cats and maybe guinea pigs. I don't know. I know dogs and cats. You take them to your veterinarian to be neutered. Well, lo and behold, another term is gonadectomy. Gonad, that means either the ovary or testis is removed. And then, of course, we have other terms, and that's maybe you know another object here. Or you could say orchidectomy. Now, this means the testis. So this is orchidectomy. And then when you're castrating or neutering a typical male, you would do a bilateral orchidectomy, right? Now, back to this little testis here. That was in the body cavity. And when one testis has remained in the body cavity, you could call that animal a cryptorchid. There's that. And then I put ism because that ism, whenever you see that as a suffix at the end of the word, that means a condition of. So the animal was under was suffering, and you know, I'm not sure if I could say suffering, but was undergoing cryptorchidism. Now this case, this is the reason I'm looking at this blurry picture again, is this animal was unilaterally cryptorchid. One testis in the body cavity, one was in the scrotum. This was normal, making sperm, making hormones. Usually a cryptorchid testis is not very functional. You can see even if it was making sperm, and a lot of times it doesn't, or they're making infertile sperm, sometimes this testis is still making some of the hormones. And then, of course, you could have a bilateral cryptorchid animal. Both testis, testes are retained in the body, and that's not good. Okay, then if you ever cut, I'm going to just put this right there. If you ever cut the surface or cut the testis after castration, I'm going to enlarge this. This is what you see. A bunch of tissue, but it's pretty nondescript, kind of pale pinkish color, but no air. And the reason I'm making that point is sometimes histological sections show some air, and I'll point that out here in a br briefly. Now I'm doing histology. That means what do we see after we take a little sliver of tissue and stain it? And I'm just going to show you some of these. You can pause and look at it, but I just want to point out they've got the epididymis label. That's always outside the testis. Here's what the testis looks like. There's blood vessels and so forth. Pretty nondescript. When you get really close, then here's what I want to concentrate on. Leydig cells are outside the seminiferous tubule. So it may be a, I'll do this. Here's a seminiferous tubule. This whole thing is making sperm. You can actually see sperm in the lumen. It would not have air. It's got fluid in there. So the Leydig cells make testosterone. Inside, here's another seminiferous tubule. Watch where I'm circling, and we're missing part of it. There's sperm tails and sperm heads in there. But in this area here, inside the seminiferous tubule, is a very important cell or cells called Sertoli cells. Okay, very important. And then, of course, the more drawings, the better. And then I've got this one here to show you um, what might be called an artifact. So here's one seminiferous tubule. It's a perfect transverse section. Remember, that's perpendicular to the long axis. There's sperm. This animal is past puberty. Only sperm are made after puberty. There's the spelling Sertoli cell inside here. Leydig cells are always outside. And maybe the one thing I should spell is when it looks like air, but it's not, it's called an artifact. And an artifact in histology is something that's there after it's prepared, but it's not there in real life. Now we got to the hormones. Here we are. We're talking about the hormones. And you might say, hey, wait a minute. I saw that on the ovary. Well, you know what's going to happen here? It's kind of neat. But if you did look at the ovary endocrinology section, I drew a wall here, and in the ovary, that's the follicular wall. In the testis, that's the seminiferous tubule wall. And this is outside the tubule, and this is inside the tubule, right? So then I've got to change the names of these two cells, but that's the only thing I have to change. 
So here it is, the two sexes are using the same hormones. Okay, so now this is a Leydig cell. Okay, I'll put it right there. This is a Sertoli cell. That's the only thing I have to change. So quickly, this is the wall of the seminiferous tubule. It's round. It'd be, you know, we're only seeing a portion. So here we go. LH comes from the anterior pituitary, stimulates the Leydig cell to make testosterone. Androgen is a family name. The testosterone diffuses across to the Sertoli cell. The Sertoli cell, having aromatase enzyme, converts testosterone to estrogen. And in the female, I said it was estradiol 17 beta. We could say the same thing here. Wow. So you should say, gee, both sexes make estrogen, both sexes make androgen. Yes, very true. And then, of course, we know the estrogen, actually, a lot of it stays in this um, seminiferous tubule, and it helps the function of the epididymis. And, of course, androgen, besides going here, will also diffuse across to blood vessels. So let me put a blood vessel here, because blood vessels are always on the outside of the seminiferous tubule, never in. And so if I put my testosterone in blue, some of it goes here and goes to the whole body. And, you know, testosterone is an anabolic hormone. It makes muscles. Doesn't a male animal look different than a female animal, right? Testosterone is also uh, responsible for brain effects, like aggression. Most male animals are more aggressive than the female animals. Really very interesting stuff. Okay. Again, the more diagrams you look at, the better off you are. This one is really comprehensive. It shows LH and FSH coming to the testis. And remember, LH stimulates Leydig cells. They're abbreviating, abbreviating them LC here. Then the testosterone diffuses into the seminiferous tubule, where FSH tells the Sertoli, Sertoli cells to convert it into uh, estradiol. So here's estradiol. It's got that O in the beginning. You know, that's the English, the British way to spell it. Anyway, one thing I forgot to mention in the previous pictures were that the Sertoli cells also make inhibin. And inhibin has a negative feedback on further FSH production. So it's kind of feedback loop. This is positive here. This is negative back here. Of course, estrogen can go around and, might, and has some influence. Testosterone, definitely, and this is depicting in the male, so that's why they've got the question mark on the estrogen. Anyway, negative feedback telling these things to release less. Very good picture, really good. Okay, let me do another one here. I'm going to block out some. No, I'm just going to do it right there. Okay, so now this is just another way of depicting that. FSH comes to the Sertoli cell because this is a little clearer. LH comes down to the Leydig cells. Leydig cells make testosterone. Sertoli cell makes inhibin. And they didn't really show you the estradiol, but the Sertoli cells make estradiol. And finally, finally, here's the list of illustrations that I use. Thanks a lot. See you later.